My husband got his AP pregnant. My life has been a complete mess now and it all feels so fake and like I'm living in a TV drama or something. My husband, 38, had an affair and got his AP pregnant and that's when my husband told me. I didn't really ask much, I just learned that her name was Giselle and that they've been seeing each other for about three years. He said it was just sex. I check my husband's phone often. So, the only way he was being able to contact her was through another device. My husband takes a long time showering. So, I took the opportunity to look through his office. I found a burner phone in his desk drawer. This is where I got to see what she looks like. Her contact name wasn't her name it was Darling. He still didn't change it. She looked like she was in her early mid-twenties. She is very gorgeous and she has an amazing figure. I started comparing myself to her when I was in my twenties and now. I didn't have an hourglass figure and still don't. I also kind of let myself go after I had my kids. I found her nudes through his text messages. I did read through them and as much as it hurt. I wanted to know more about their affair as I wasn't going to get exact answers from my husband. I found pictures of both of them when they would go out on dates. I even watched their sex tapes. She looked like a pro. My husband would compliment and praise her a lot in the videos. They were obviously very turned on with the fact that he was married. I found videos of them having sex with others too. They were often with girls who looked around their early twenties. He did things to her and texted her things that he would never text me. They were obviously more than just physical and there was an emotional affair going on. He would vent to her a lot through text message and I saw that they often called each other. They even shared memes with each other and it seemed that they both had the same sense of humor. He was buying her gifts and sending her flowers. I saw that he would also send updates on my daughter and pictures of all three of them hanging out. I hate camping and always avoided it. I don't like sleeping on the ground, the bugs, and going fishing. I never tag along when my husband would plan. He stopped asking me to go about a few years back. My eldest daughter is the only who tags along. I found pictures of her taking selfies with both of them in the car or with her and just my daughter. I sent myself a picture and later asked my daughter about her. She freaked out and didn't say anything. I asked her who the lady was and she said she didn't know. I kept pestering her to tell me and she then told me that it was dad's girlfriend. She ended up confessing that she would tag along with them. All my children are enrolled in activities and they often overlap when it comes to competitions. My husband and I switch with each other on who goes where. She said that AP would come see her at her dance recitals when I wasn't there. She also said that they would lie and sometimes my husband would take her to her house and they would practice together. Apparently, she used to do gymnastics and ballet. They would have sleepovers and go to the spa and go shopping together. I did ask her if she knew if she was pregnant and my daughter said she knew. My husband had taken her out of school and took her along. So, they could see the gender of the baby. I told her that she wasn't allowed to talk to her anymore and she got upset. I took her phone away and I did go through it. My daughter and her often texted each other. I saw that she was telling her about how excited she was about her baby sister and that she was glad that AP was in her life. I did find her Instagram through my daughter's phone. She had pictures of my husband and her on there. She also posted videos of my daughter and her doing dances. I saw that she graduated from an Ivy League and my husband was there to congratulate her. I still don't know how they met though. When she was posting pictures of her pregnancy. She was posting pictures with my husband too. She was telling everyone that it's my husband's. She also sends him updates and my husband excitedly replies. 
She also looks very gorgeous pregnant and he often tells her. Update We had a small family get together with his side of the family. The kids wanted to stay over at their uncle's and we let them. We went home by ourselves when we were preparing to go to bed. He went to his office and brought out some paperwork. Surprise! He had the paperwork all ready to file for divorce. He ended up confessing that it was too hard for him to break things off with her and to just be able to financially support and only have visitation rights. He confessed that he is in love with her and that he still wants to be with her. Also, I found out that AP was a student intern at his old workplace. She was recommended by a friend of the boss. She went from filing paperwork to joining in meetings. She noticed that he often would be the one to stay behind BC of their supervisor. He often had complained about him and how he's messy and doesn't know how to do his job. I guess, she noticed about how often co-workers complained about this supervisor too. So, she started helping out and was soon making things easier for everyone. She ended up basically doing the supervisor's work for him. She soon would also start to stay after to help my husband out. They both went from just eating lunch together every now and then to every day, getting coffee together, and then staying after to go to dinner together. They started text messaging each other after work too. As for the physical affair it started when his younger brother was getting married and they went to Las Vegas for his bachelor's party. AP was there at the same time and they apparently ran into each other at the casino. It was strictly coincidental. Her friend surprised her with a vacation to Las Vegas for her birthday. The friend had a VIP area reserve at some club. She invited them to tag along. That's the day where it started to get intimate. He let her dance on him and they started getting touchy. They were also coincidentally staying at the same hotel. They both had sex that night. After the night, they had sex. They both confessed their feelings for each other when they were in Vegas. Brother ended up getting sick and leaving a few days early, I didn't know this. So, he spent the rest of Las Vegas with her. He moved into her hotel room and the groomsman he was sharing a room with was single. So, he was more than pleased to hear that he was now able to bring girls over. So, he was helping my ex out. I asked if he's still been seeing her and he let me know that he is. He's still sexually active with her too. I asked if he's still attracted to me and he said that he wasn't and hasn't been for years. He regrets not breaking our marriage off earlier. Not for my sake, but because it was hurting AP and the children. He told me that I have no filter and I am very rude to people and workers. He hates going out to places because I always cause a scene. I baby my sons too much and they behave the same way I do. They don't listen to him when he talks to them because they know I'm going to defend them. Whatever body image issues I have of myself that I tend to take it out on my daughter by commenting on her weight and criticizing her for everything. He said it was my fault that I never took any interest or made time to get to know her well. She often felt alienated and like I didn't pay attention to her and that I prefer my sons. It was obvious to her that I didn't enjoy going to her dance recitals. There was a time where I just couldn't deal with the stress and I may have told my daughter that it would be better off that she changed to a sport. That when she would tell me these things that I would tell her to not argue. Update 2, what happened when I confronted AP on social media? He's packed a suitcase full of clothes, the night before. I saw AP update her Instagram story with both of them together in bed it looks like she's nude and he's shirtless. She shared a picture of her enjoying breakfast and a video of him kissing her hand when he's driving. I replied to her story and made a comment on her Instagram pictures about their affair. She hasn't deleted and she just been replying with hearts and giving her condolences. A few seconds later, she uploaded a video of her giving my husband a kiss while they take a bubble bath with the caption unbothered. 
she replied to my messages and sent pictures of what looks like them when they went out for dinner, them going for a walk by the beach, a video of my husband waking around shirtless with clothes on the floor and then back at her posing. She sent a date in September and I'm pretty sure she's sharing the day she got pregnant. She sent a link to a Facebook account and it seems to be my husband's. The account is a newer Facebook and it looks like to be active for a year and a half. I can only see pictures as everything else is blocked. The account is active and has pictures of the kids, of him and her, and a picture of ultrasound. There's no pictures of me. I can see that we have mutual friends. Some of them are of his family members, friends we both have, a few of the parents from my daughter's dance class, his friends, and their wives. This woman has no shame. I've started taking action when it comes to divorce and am doing my research. I'm not staying in the marriage and you guys don't have to worry about that part. Utterly cruel of them both. Just disgusting. Save everything. Sue her. Seriously sue her. Destroy both his and her careers. Expose them. You should also message each of those people on his Facebook and ask them how long had they known he was having an affair. Save that, too. Second story. Found out my GF of five years has been sleeping with my friend from high school. But I feel nothing. Am I broken? I, 34M, had been dating my GF, 31F, Ashley, for five years. We met back in 2018. I remember the day vividly. I was coming home from work as a traffic controller when I came up behind a car that was sitting at a green light. I of course was tired and irritated from work, so I honked my horn and yelled for the driver to move. The driver waved their hands out her window. I got out of my truck to see what was going on. The driver, Ashley, was in tears saying that her car ran out of gas and didn't know where the nearest gas station was located. Since I lived nearby, I knew the nearest gas station was nearly two miles away. I offered to help her, and she happily accepted. I pushed her car off to the side of the road to prevent any accidents. Since she didn't have a fuel canister, I drove her to the nearest gas station and filled the gas canister I had stored in my work truck. After putting gas in her car and helping her get to the gas station to finish fueling up her car, we exchanged phone numbers. After that day, Ashley and I started calling and texting each other. We connected and got along so well, which led us to eventually dating. My parents loved her, and her parents loved me. We loved the same anime music and even the same taste in cars. We rented a small apartment together and lived together ever since. Every Saturday night, we would change into our favorite PJs and watch some Bleach, My Hero Academia, Demon Slayer, or One Piece. That was our anime night. I loved her so much that I was planning on proposing to her. Last year my friend from high school, Tony, moved back to town after he divorced his wife. The first night he came back, we decided to crack open a few beers reconnect after not seeing each other for 15 years. I told him to stay the night, since he was too drunk to drive. A week after that night, Ashley seemed different and not like her usual self. Instead of having anime night, she would rather go out with her friends and have a girl's night or go help her parents or something along those lines. S asterisk X became less passionate and seemed more like a chore for her. She even stopped saying I love you before I left for work in the morning. Tony even stopped talking to me, even though we were good friends. It seemed strange, but I didn't think too much of it. That is until last week. The job site had to be shut down early for the day due to heavy rain. When I got home, I saw Tony's car parked out front. I thought Tony was waiting for me to get home, so we could hang out. I walk inside to find Tony on the couch, while Ashley was naked and riding him. At that moment, it was like my brain had shut off all emotions inside my head. I felt no anger, no sadness, no hatred, no heartbreak. Nothing. I was numb. 
I stood there for about ten seconds before they noticed me. Ashley freaked out while Tony grabbed his shirt and ran off. Ashley kept crying and saying that it was not what it seemed. That it was a mistake and that she's sorry. I simply packed my stuff and left the apartment. The only thing I said to Ashley was an emotionless goodbye before leaving. I called my dad and told him what happened. I also asked if I could stay with him for a bit and he let me move into his house. I'll keep you updated on anything in the future. As of now, it has been five days since that event and I still feel nothing. No emotions, just numb. Am I broken? Update. I've finally started to smile and laugh again. I've contacted my landlord and explained the situation. He told me not to worry and that I will be getting 100% of my deposit and her deposit. Any damages to the apartment will be taken out of her portion of the deposit. I contacted Ashley's parents and told them the situation. They were shocked and disgusted that their daughter could commit such a disgraceful act. They wanted me to forgive them for what their daughter did. I told that they don't need forgiveness, since they didn't break my heart. I blocked Ashley and Tony on my phone and all of my media accounts. My mom was sad upon hearing the events of what happened. My father was furious, because he liked Tony a lot. I don't think I can repeat what he said, due to the graphic nature of his words. I'm slowly getting my life back on track. I'm focusing more on my family and my job. My mother asked me if I would ever join the dating scene again. I didn't want to yell at her for asking such a question, so I simply told her that I'll think about it in a few months. I feel I should give you all one last update on the situation, so here it goes. I doing well with myself, although I did have an ugly cry session about two weeks ago. I think it was because the realization finally hit me that my ex-girlfriend broke my heart and my ex-best friend stabbed me in my back, but I am over that and have moved on. Last week I ran into Ashley's parents at the store. They again apologized profusely about what their daughter had done. I accepted their apology and again told them that it wasn't them who broke my heart. Her mother told me that they haven't heard much from Ashley. The last time they saw her, Ashley had moved out of state with Tony. Which is good for me, because the farther those two are away from me, the less likely I will ever see or deal with them ever again. My work performance has improved to where I got promoted to crew lead. I'm still living with my father because his social security income checks have been decreasing over time so I decided to live with him to help pay for some of the bills and necessities. I have been thinking about rejoining the dating scene again. Because to be honest, I do have my father to keep me company. But I do miss the love and companionship that only a lover could give to fill that empty void in my life. It will only get better for you. Don't worry about Ashley or Tony. They deserve each other. I hope that you continue to strive. Please don't ever go back with her if she turns up at your door.